Hey, Pastor Steve Walford here. Hope you're doing well today. I want to talk to us about rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 says this, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. And then that phraseology, rightly dividing the word of truth. Well, the word of truth is a scripture, the Bible. And most false doctrine comes from the fact that people do not correctly divide or rightly divide the word of truth. And so, you know, obviously you have in the Bible, the first five books of the Bible are the Torah or the Pentateuch, and then you have 17 historical books. But that's not necessarily what it's talking about, about rightly dividing the word of truth. It's saying there's an Old Testament and a New Testament. The word testament could also be considered a covenant. So there's an Old Testament and a, an Old Covenant and a New Covenant. And so, for the first 4,000 years of man's history, we go from Genesis to Malachi, and starting about 1490 B.C., somewhere in that neighborhood, you have what's known as the Old Covenant, God's chosen people, the Israelites. Then you have a period, a kingdom of heaven period, so to speak, where you have John the Baptist, you have Jesus alive here on this earth in the flesh, God manifested in the flesh, and they are preaching the gospel and baptism for the remission of sins, and Jesus is sending forth disciples. Now, this is primarily seen in the four gospels. So you have the Old Testament, first 4,000 years, we're going to rightly divide the word of truth. Then the four gospels are the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. According to John chapter 17, he passed the baton to his apostles, and so, and also Luke chapter 24. And so then, beginning with the book of Acts, you have the birthday of the church in Acts chapter 2. Almost all Christian religions, except hyper-dispensationalists, would say the birthday of the church is found in Acts chapter 2. And so this is the beginnings of the new covenant. Jesus prophesied and commanded of the new covenant. The apostles applied the new covenant in the book of Acts. So where would you find salvation being employed is in the book of Acts. Where you would find salvation being taught to the disciples is after the resurrection of Jesus, but before the ascension in what are known as the Great Commission Scriptures. And so then, after the book of Acts, you have 21 epistles, 14 or so written by the Apostle Paul, seven known as general epistles written by other people. And so if the epistles are letters written to believers in churches of people saved during the book of Acts time period. And then the book of Revelation after chapter 3 beginning at chapter 4 is future things. It is eschatology, a look at the future. So rightly dividing the word of truth you would find salvation being told by Jesus in the time period after the resurrection but before the ascension and being applied by the apostles in the book of Acts. Now, there has never been a stop from then until now. We live in the New Testament day and age. We live in the New Testament dispensation. Miracle signs and wonders still confirm the gospel. The gospel, according to 1 Corinthians 15, is the death of burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The death, burial, and resurrection. That is applied to our lives when we repent of our sins, come to Christ at Calvary, are buried with Him in the likeness of His burial and water baptism in our Savior's name, in Jesus' name, and the reception of the Holy Spirit of God, which is a free gift of God that He gives to whosoever will, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord in faith and obedience. God fills them with His Spirit. And then we live as citizens in the kingdom by the epistles. And so this is rightly dividing the word of truth. You're not going to find salvation like in John 3.16 unless it's John 3.16 rightly understood. Back up a few verses. Go to John 3.3 3 through 3.8. There you'll find it. Go over to John chapter 7 verses 37 through 39. Even go to where Jesus is talking to the woman at the well. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. This is not meant to disparage or demean anybody who's not had this wonderful experience. 
But I want to encourage you, don't let your pride and don't let past experience, don't even let what your family members have done, don't let your social groups keep you out of that glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So rightly dividing the word of truth is the key to understanding scripture. I pray God will help you obey his gospel today in Jesus' name.